السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله رب العالمين ولا قبة للمتقين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين وإمام الأولين والآخرين فآله وصحابه أجمعين أما بعد Okay, so today is uh, odd night so a quick reminder right you know we went through this and every odd night inshallah i would like to remind myself and inshallah in that process remind you also that every second is precious which is almost uh, you know equal to one day and definitely better than one day we know that so alhamdulillah so it's so precious so let's not waste the time uh, that we have tonight inshallah okay so as usual the title slide will be the last slide so let me start with some very simple basic questions so do you normally tell others uh, can you please ask allah to forgive me do you have the habit of doing that will you tell others no bhai we just tell do dua ah uh, okay do dua anybody here who says that ask allah to forgive me no okay you don't huh? why it's a bad thing you should not ask uh, others you know tell them you know ask allah to forgive me guide me Okay, anyways, fine. That's totally up to you. If you want to or if you don't want to. <laughs> right. So question is, um, do you want angels to ask forgiveness for you? Yes. Definitely. 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 Okay. So we normally ask people, right? Human beings. You know, and we tell them, do dua for us. So by the way, why do you ask uh, others to do dua for you? We, we ourselves, we do dua, right? Why should they do dua for us? What's so special? Everybody is saying, we are saying, huh? dua may adhra kiyap. Right? So then everybody we is saying, we do not know uh, whose dua will be accepted by Allah. Inshallah, their dua may be accepted. Okay, their dua might be accepted. Okay. But imagine if the angels are doing dua, then, uh, because the angels will not do dua unless, unless, can everybody complete that statement? Unless Allah wills. Yes, unless Allah gives them permission to do. Just because you know, I say, you know, can you please do dua? It doesn't work like that. Allah Rabbul Alameen has to give permission to do dua. So it's very important. So the angels do are, are, are at a completely different level. Okay. Now, everybody here said that we want angels to ask forgiveness for us. Okay. Alhamdulillah. So in even in the angels, there are ranks. Not every angel is equal. So we have high ranking angels and we have, you know, uh, uh, angels of lower rank. So do you want the high ranking angels to ask forgiveness for you? What do you think? Yes, 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 yes definitely. obviously, obviously, right? Okay. Now, we go one step further. The same high-ranking angels, they are not just asking forgiveness. They are also asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give Jannah for you. How does this sound? If this happens, what do you think? Amazing, bhai. Amazing, huh? Okay. We'll go one step further. And these high-ranking angels, they are not only asking Jannah for you. They are asking Jannah for your parents. For your spouses and for your descendants. Not kids, huh? Descendants. How, is, how does this sound now? Sounds very unrealistic, right? Hey, bhai, ye sab hota kya? Will these things happen? Huh? But if this happens, and if it happens for you and me, what do you think? How will it be? Mashallah, a very nice thing. Very nice thing, huh? Okay. So, we all want to be part of this, right? We all want this high-ranking angels to ask forgiveness for us, to ask Jannah for us, not just for me, for my parents, for my spouse, for my descendants. Yes, right? Everybody wants it, right? Yes or no? Yes, sir. Yes, we want it. But just because we want, we will not get it. We have to do something. Yeah? So the question is, what should you do or, or what should I do to get the dua of these high-ranking angels? That's what we are going to discuss today. But before I discuss... I want to start from where I left yesterday. So which surah did we discuss yesterday? Do you remember? Zumar. Surah ah, Zumar. Surah Zumar. Okay, mashallah. Right? Very good. It is surah number 39, ayat number 71 to 75 is what we discussed. And we kept on discussing. And in the last verse of surah Zumar, ayat number 75, you know, can you recollect? Try to recollect. Close your eyes and recollect. The gates of Jannah are already kept open. You are now being driven with honor and privilege, with a warm welcome inside Jannah. And you enter Jannah. And what do you see? What do you see in, in, in Jannah? Immediately, what do you see? As soon as you enter. What does the ayat say? You see the angels 
Yes. You see the angels. You see the angels and Allah. Yeah. Yeah. Ultimately, but that is that is that is implicit. Now Allah doesn't explicitly mention you will see me, right? That is that is very order. You know, study the Quran. If you just read it superficially, you will not get it. But yes, but the angels, sir, it is very explicit. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says you will definitely see the angels surrounding the arsh, glorifying Allah Azza wa Jal. Okay. Now this is yesterday, right? Keep this in mind. There is, you know, it will continues. Actually, the the story continues. It doesn't stop there. Okay. So, who are these angels? Who will do dua for you and me? The very next to surah, surah number forty, that was thirty-nine. Surah number forty. Open your translations. Go to ayat number seven. Those angels who carry the arsh and those around it, exactly the same description. Nothing different. The last ayat of surah Zumar, same thing. Right? Subhanallah. There we entered Jannah and we saw them. Subhanallah. Today we are in dunya and the same angels who are around the arsh who carry the arsh and who are around it, they are. Glorifying the praises, same thing. Look at the same description. They are glorifying the praises. The Sabbihana mi hamdi Rabbi him. Yes, they have faith in him. Or you minuna be. They have faith in him. And what do they do? Right? Imam Ibn Kathir rahimullah and other mufassirun. They say, I, I am giving Imam Ibn Kathir because it's there in English. You can go go to the English uh, Ibn Kathir translation and you can check it up. They say these are not some normal angels. These are malaikatul mukarrabun. These are angels who are closest to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. That's why I said high-ranking angels. Okay, so these high-ranking angels, what do they do? Look at this. They go around the arsh, they carry the arsh, they they do tasbih of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, and they ask for forgiveness for the believers. Subhanallah. And look at their dua. Allah mentions their dua. This is what they say: Our Rabb, you encompass everything with mercy and knowledge. So forgive those who repent and follow your way, and protect them from the torment of hellfire. Okay. So this is what it says. Now. This ayat is very clear on who gets the dua. It's not complicated at all. Who will get the dua of the angels? First of all, you should have iman, faith, right? Second of all, the, the, you should be a person of repentance. You should ask Allah's forgiveness. Subhanallah. Look at this, huh? Remember this. And number three, we should follow Allah's way, which is basically obedience to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. So we should have iman. Then we should repent. We should be a person of repentance who frequently repents to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. And number three, we should strive to follow Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala's way, which is which is nothing but obedience to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Now the dua doesn't stop here; it continues. Look at the next ayat. Right, first, what did they do in the previous ayat? They were asking for Allah's forgiveness. Ya Allah, forgive them, people who have iman and people who are repenting and who follow your path. Forgive them. Now they continue the dua and they say and they say, Rabbana. Admit them into Jannah to Adan, the Jannahs of eternity, plural, not Jannat, Jannat, okay, plurals, right? You know, give them paradises, heavens of eternity, which you have promised them. Now this is where it is, along with the righteous among their parents, spouses, and descendants. La ilaha illallah, right? Subhanallah. They are not just doing dua for us; they are doing dua for our parents, for our spouses. And for our descendants, again, not kids, huh? not abna, durya, descendants, right? You know, my son, my grandson, my great grandson, and it keeps going like that till the day of judgment. Allah alone knows how many generations will come, inshallah, right? So this entire descendants, oh, what a beauty! Do you think the dua stops here? No, the dua continues, and protect them from the consequences of their evil deeds. Whoever you protect from the evil of their deeds on that day. Will receive your mercy, and that is the ultimate achievement. La ilaha illallah, right? So you can see that three verses have been dedicated to just mention the dua of these high-ranking angels. Allah Rabbul Alamin has spent three ayats, three ayats, three verses only. To, what what is it mentioning? Nothing. Just the angels doing dua. For whom? We need to know the key actions. Number one is iman, faith. So this, anyways, is the Entry ticket. If you want to think about anything in Akhirah, this is the entry ticket, right? If you don't have iman, I mean, there's no point in uh, having any discussion, right? Everything is going down the train. So this is basic, right? Entry ticket. But what is the? What are the other two key actions here? Look at this: repentance, following Allah's way. So this repentance and obedience to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala is the key here to get this dua of the angels. Why is it so important in these last few nights? Of Ramadan that is left, and today is an odd night. It's quite possible that today might be Laylatul Qadr, and Allah knows best. So today, 
we know that one of the important ibada one of the important ibada apart from standing in prayer apart from qiyam is asking allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forgiveness and we know the we all know the dua right aisha radhiyallahu anha asked the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and he said ask for repentance right allah minnaka afu want to have alfa for for anni so this repentance holds such a big value in front of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala right but what is the key here everybody today alhamdulillah most of us we will do repentance but many of us may lag behind in one aspect what is that what is following the repentance yes everybody will recite dua everybody will cry to allah subhanahu wa taala but that crying that repentance should be followed by something right you cannot just leave it like that there there always in life right you should have a follow up you just do something once and you leave it like that it's gone what is the follow up here the follow up that allah subhanahu wa taala expects is obedience yes i committed lot of sins because of my weakness because of my weakness in iman right innumerable number of sins and i ask for allah's forgiveness and allah will forgive me most of us we stop there no you should continue so whatever mistakes i have made i self introspect and i make an intention a very strong intention that i will not commit those mistakes again at least i should try my best again if we fall you know into sin because of our weakness it's fine you know the cycle will continue because that is the cycle of a believer but we have to be very conscious and we have to be very focused to make sure that i don't repeat the same mistakes whatever mistakes they may be right at personal life communal life family life right there are several things right there are a lot of mistakes that we make knowingly unknowingly uh, out of ignorance out of arrogance we do all that so i have to make a list like what are the mistakes i am making and what should i correct how can i fix these mistakes how can i prevent myself falling into the same sins over and over again this my dear brothers and sisters is the key take away from this ayat if you all want this high ranking angels those who are closest to allah subhanahu wa taala do dua not for me for me for my parents for my spouses for my descendants subhanallah huh? and this is like you know you can imagine the quality of the dua and where are they doing the dua from not from the dunya they are there right right under the arsh and you know other angels are carrying the arsh la ilaha illallah and they are doing this dua constant ya salam right imagine this is an honor right and look at this where does allah rabbul alamin mention this he mentions it in a surah that is named al ghafir the forgiving la ilaha illallah subhanallah and what is al ghafir mean i translated you know, they say the forgiving i want to do you know there's a subtlety that is involved in this word in this arabic word ghafir it's called ism fa'il so when we use words like this right the action is happening right now for example i am saying abdullah is sleeping when is he sleeping i make a statement abdullah is sleeping when is he sleeping now in present right now in present right he is sleeping now i say irfan is standing he is standing now you see so this action right ing ing it is happening right now present continuous al ghafir is like that when is he forgiving right now as i am speaking as you are listening to this he is forgiving allah akbar right so in this surah and the very you, know, you can see the uh, initial uh, to first two ayat of the surah allah subhanahu wa taala says ghafir dhamb right allah is the one who is a forgiver of sins he starts like that right so you can clearly see that you know there is a stamp of authority in terms of forgiveness he saying i am the one who is forgiving and right and he sees it so befitting that he wants to put this verses of the angels the high ranking angels the angels who are closest to allah subhanahu wa taala to do dua for us right and today in this blessed night inshallah taala by allah's mercy you and me can be the recipient of the duas of this high ranking angels these angels who are closest to allah subhanahu wa taala and what should i do first of all al- alhamdulillah we are all believers alhamdulillah right be sincere in repentance and it doesn't stop with repentance because that obedience to allah is the key right so we have to make efforts today itself not not you know, after ramadan today itself we have to make efforts and do dua that ya allah i made these mistakes but i don't want to commit these mistakes again i want to obey you i want to follow your path so give me the tawfeeq to obey you to follow your path this is extremely important and remember this these angels do you think they are doing dua on their own do you think they are doing dua on their own in group 
I mean, I mean, when I say on their own, I'm not talking about individual or in groups. Okay. I'm talking about out of their own uh, decision. Okay, we'll do do like no. that. No, no, no. Uh, no. It is a command from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Uh, it is a command from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Okay, remember this. So, what does it tell us today when we are asking Allah, "Inna kafufun afuwan tu hibul afa farfuani"? Remember that Allah loves our repentance. Allah loves to forgive, right? And He loves it so much that He has commanded the high-ranking angels, the angels who are closest to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, to do dua. Look at this. Obviously, it is natural, right? What do we expect, right? Okay, I'm asking forgiveness. Allah commands them. Uh, okay, ask forgiveness for this guy. No, He says, add their parents, add their spouses, add their descendants. La ilaha illallah. Look at the love of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, and also how much He loves. when he sees his servants repenting repenting to him sincerely this is the power of repentance my dear brothers and sisters this is from the quran huh? normally people explain all this from hadith this is a tie there is absolutely nothing you know uh, you just read it that's it you go take a translation you know even if you don't know arabic it's okay just take any translation even how pathetic the translation is you will get this so straight forward subhanallah this is the power of repentance my dear brothers and sisters so remember this today when you spend the night in repentance this ayat this verse should come to your mind and remember that as you are begging allah subhanahu wa taala to forgive you there are angels who are carrying his arsh and who are right under the arsh they are doing dua for you for your parents for your spouses and descendants and they are asking allah subhanahu wa taala not only to forgive you but to admit you all in janna not one jannat paradises plural right and they are asking allah subhanahu wa taala give them your mercy right don't uh, you know um, don't make them taste the evil of their uh, evil consequences of their sins very important because we all commit sins right it's all very tightly uh, connected to the repentance that we are asking see actually mirror right we are asking the same thing right yalla don't you know obviously you know anybody who is sincere will ask right yalla and you know, i want my parents to be in janna with me right i want my spouse to be in janna i want my descendants to be in janna right we do that Look at it; it's actually a mirror. Just that the quality of the dua is different, right? You look at my quality of the dua, and look at the angels doing. And who are the angels? The angels who are closest to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. It is a completely different feeling. So, what is the title slide? The angels closest to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala are doing dua for you. So, may Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala give us the taufik to be the recipients of the dua of those angels who are closest to Him. Amin, Rabbil Alamin. And may Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala forgive all our sins, admit us. our parents our spouses and our descendants to paradise i mean ya rabbal alamin